Um, I'm Phil Sosway. I've been a postdoc here for about three years now, and uh, I'm organizing the Random Matrix Theory and Probability Seminar. So I organized it my first year here, I organized it this year, and then another postdoc, Roland Bauerschmidt, took, took over for, um, for my second year. Uh, the Random Matrix Theory and Probability Seminar is um, a seminar which is attended mostly by the postdocs and students of Deputy Director uh, Horn Sir Yao. So we focus on random matrices, which is the field that Professor Yao specializes in, but also we've been attempting to really go broad and in addition to random matrix speakers, really sort of survey the field of probability and get a good sense of what the different areas of interest are. And we've been even inviting some people from, you know, more computer science areas or statistics and attempting to make contact with, uh, with, those, with those areas. Even though mathematically the things that we're interested in seem very similar, um, there's um, sort of a language barrier with a lot of these people who work on things that are, you know, in practice actually quite related to random matrix techniques and the techniques of statistical mechanics which we as people who work with with Professor Yao are familiar with but they're often phrased the problems that these people are interested in are often phrased in a different way so we try to understand what exactly are the mathematical issues that they're interested in because they're often interested in applications and so we try to understand what are the issues that that they face and if we can really find within you know there are issues within the, the applied problems, some problems of mathematical interest that we could study and that we could develop into an interesting research program. So for example, one of the areas that we're interested in and we had several speakers come talk to us about is the area of compressed sensing and matrix completion, which is something that had the scene that sorry, that has seen a lot of progress in the last um, in the last few years. Um, for example, there's the Netflix Prize in, um, I think, 2000, 2007, 2008, I don't remember. Anyway, about 10 years ago, Netflix asked, um, put out all this data and uh, asked people whether they, could, they would be able to improve on their recommendation system using the data that they, um, that they would provide. And a lot of teams, that's generated a lot of interest and a lot of teams uh, jumped into this and with all sorts of methods tried to get you know extract some information out of the data and some people took a very engineering approach to it but some people had very interesting theoretical ideas and this whole area of trying to <clears throat> recover information from sparse data sparse in this case because there are few people who uh, watch really even a small percentage of the total number of movies. So you have, I don't know, tens of thousands of movies and maybe millions of people, but most people don't watch all the movies. So we have very sparse data. You want to extract some information out of it, out of a big matrix, which is sparse. And this is an area, this type of, when you abstract it to that level, it's a very, uh, it's a very general problem that um, corresponds to things that have been looked at in computer science and that we wanted to understand. So that's one example of um, an area that we try to uh, that we try to understand better um, at a sort of semi-mathematical and applied level. Another uh, another example is um, the Kardar Parisi Zhang Universality class. That's a um, it's hard to explain, but Carter, Parisi, and Zhang were three um, statistical mechanicians, I think, statistical mechanics, I guess you could call them. Um, and they were trying to understand the um, fluctuations of an interface. So something like the example that's often, often given is a, a burning uh, front that's eating up a piece of paper. If you, you, know, you hold it to a flame, at the bottom, the fire will sort of rise up into the paper and you'll see an interface which is not quite smooth or you can imagine it won't you know there won't be a straight line a wall of fire coming up but in some places the fire will be higher and some places it will be lower and this seems sort of random this type of interface is what Carter Parisi and Zhang this type of growing interface is what KPZ they're called are we're interested in and this turns out to be related in some way that we still don't completely understand to random matrices and so we had many speakers come talk to us about these sort of um, laws, the sort of 
yeah, the sort of general patterns that you see in this uh, in this KPC universality class. And th these patterns appear in many different disparate models, and there are very different people with different methods who seem to find results that match with each other. And that's something that was of interest to us. I mean, this is still, it still remains a mystery to a large extent. And that's another example of something that we were interested in.